Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you my full Lisa Eldridge lipstick collection. As many of you know, Lisa Eldridge lipsticks are some of my favorite formula and, and packaging of all time for lipsticks. Uh, these lipsticks are a luxury purchase, so it's the kind of thing you often want to look into, investigate the colors before you make a choice. So I have a fair amount. There's still many more shades I would like from Lisa Eldridge, but I have a decent amount in front of me here. And bonus, I'm at my mom's right now. Uh, some of you may recognize the backdrop more from the Angels on Broomsticks channel. That's my mother-daughter makeup channel. So anyway, I'm at my mom's looking after her dogs because she's away and she has... She has a decent amount of Lisa Eldridge lipsticks as well, so I'm throwing those in there too. Not shades I necessarily bought, but just to expand on the swatch party gonna happen here. And yeah, I have, I think 13, 13 in front of me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 11, 12, 13, 14. Yeah, 14. I have the True Velvet lip colors, as well as the Luxury Lucent lip colors, and then her new Velveteen liquid lip, a couple of those as well. So anyway, I'm going to show some comparisons with some shades that are similar-ish and yeah, it's going to be fun. Let's hope my lips uh, can stand this test of showing all these. So let's start with some like mauve brownie type of shades. I'm going to go for Velvet Sorcery and Velvet Decade. So on the top we have Velvet Sorcery and on the bottom Velvet Decade. I've featured Velvet Decade before in my fall makeup look because it's such a perfect like vampy type of brown, but a little bit approachable in some ways. I do want to preface this by saying like what I love about Lisa Eldridge lipsticks is just how much thought goes into the products she makes and some of these colors and descriptions and the backstory. She's truly like a genius when it comes to color and pigment. She like looks back in the history books of time across cultures and art and that's where her colors come from. So when you're investing in these lipsticks you are investing in a sort of curated experience of color even as uh, you know intense as that may sound some people are like it's just a lipstick. Uh, no not Lisa. Lisa Eldridge lipsticks are really something else. So yeah, Velvet Sorcery, which is a newer release, and Velvet Decade. I'm going to swatch these on my lips and explain to you, yeah, why I chose these ones and also what she was inspired by with these shades. First up, Velvet Sorcery, because it's a little bit lighter. All right, this is Velvet Sorcery on the top here. She calls this a bewitching medium dusky clay rose that borrows a little cool toned mauve magic from the 90s. The indie it girl of the true velvets. So yeah, this one came out a bit more recently. It wasn't part of her initial release and it sold out so quickly. I think what drew people to this shade is that it is like that 90s vibe of a bit of a vampy lip, but it's not too dark. I think it's really approachable for anybody interested in, you know, conjuring that kind of energy with a lipstick, but not feeling like overwhelmed by it. Right now I find it's casting a little bit purple, um, probably in contrast to the sort of like browns on my eyelid. I tried to keep it as neutral as possible, but yeah, I do like to pull this shade out when I'm doing like a mauve eye. I believe I used it in my soft summer makeup look. So yeah, here is Velvet Sorcery. Okay, Velvet Decade. I didn't feel the need to take off this lip color too much because this one's quite a bit darker. Anyway, this is one of the first ones I purchased, I purchased three at first and this was one of them. And I've been turning to it time and time and again, I almost feel like on Instagram, I'm practically known for it because I love to feature this shade in my fall makeup looks, my vampy makeup looks. Anyway, I'll show it to you and then we'll talk. Okay. Here is Velvet Decade. 
Here's it swatched. Such a vampy shade, but not as dark as something like a black, obviously. So I think it still has that approachability element to it. Uh, as per Lisa Eldridge's description, she says, a divinely decadent burnt chocolate shade is lifted and made very wearable by its blue and lively red undertones, which stop it from being a flat brown. This color is absolutely gorgeous as a light padded stain. Oh, I've never tried that. As it's a perfectly your lips but better shade. Full coverage, it's the most decadent and glamorous modern vintage shade inspired by hand-tinted sepia fashion portraits. Ooh. I've never tried to doing a stain. I, I need to try that at some point. Yeah, definitely dark. You see that chocolatiness to it, but yeah, when you see it in person, there's something about it that doesn't feel like, I don't know, your lips are too sucked back by a dark color, like especially with the right makeup accompanying it. Yeah, I've worn this shade with many different eyeshadows and just found it something I turn to on the regular when I'm just really feeling like a vampy lip. Uh, it's perfect for that. So this is Velvet Decade. Next, I'm gonna show you some of the luxuriously lucent lip colors. So these aren't matte lipsticks. They're not like the highly pigmented uh, mattes that she's known for. These are her formula that's, it's a little bit more sheer and balmy. So I have two shades, Meet Me in Berlin and Night Thoughts. So this is Meet Me in Berlin. And this is Night Thoughts. So much more of like a warm-ish brown and then such a classic berry lip happening here. I'll show you Meet Me in Berlin first. This is a lip shade I'm sort of on the fence about. I don't know, let's see how it looks today. <laughs> So this is Meet Me in Berlin, much more of a lighter neutral than the first ones we were looking at. So Lisa describes this as a deliciously rich tan shade, which delivers to various intensities as a nude brown. Inspired by a shoot Lisa worked on in East Berlin in the early noughties. I've never heard that term before, noughties, but apparently it's British for like the 20, 2000s to the 2010s. Anyway, there's a hint of avant-garde and counterculture feel to this one. So, I don't know, this one I I always feel like I need to pair a lip liner with these types of shades and I can show you that as well, but with something sort of less pigmented and more sheer, I, I always want that structure of a lip liner. This one, yeah, it's, it's nice, but um, I'm just someone who likes more vibrant lip shades, but people who like a everyday wearable look, I think would feel more drawn to this one. I'm just gonna pop on Endless Cacao, which is the perfect liner for so many lipsticks and see how it translates with just a bit more structure. Yeah, like personally, I just like that so much more. Uh, it's a slightly different shade, but I think they go together really nicely. Any kind of like neutral, but slightly deeper lip liner, I think just brings this lip shade a little bit more support. But everyone has their own taste for how they like lip shades to work and how if they like lip liner at all, I, I love, you know, the look of structure on a lip. Now I'll show you Night Thoughts. Okay, here is Night Thoughts. You can definitely see how this is a deeper mauvey berry on her website. It's described as a deep creme de cassis saturnine shade with a heart of darkness. I don't know what saturnine means. Shall we look it up? Gloomy. Ooh, gloomy. Okay, I like that. A gloomy shade with a heart of darkness. Okay. A sensual black cherry hue that suits all skin tones. One swipe will give you the mauvey veneer of a just bitten lip. Whilst built up, it gives a gorgeous depth. As profound and deep as the conversations with friends that carry through the night. So yeah, I do like this shade with um, something like a liner and like a berry um, blush to like sort of 
brings some liveliness to the cheeks while you have this like purpley berry going on on the lips. Because it's darker, I feel less need for a liner, although I, I would probably wear it still with a lip liner. Um, yeah, this one's really pretty. I think it's approachable still, even though it is like a, a darker kind of berry because of the translucent formula. It, uh, yeah, it definitely feels more approachable. I will note that this is sort of something that does happen a lot with more sheer, especially like deeper toned formulas. If you do have chopped lips, like you will see a bit of that kind of clinging. So this is the kind of uh, lip formula that I really reserve for when my lips are having a good lip day. If I have really chapped lips, this is not something I necessarily turn to. Just do note that. In terms of these formulas, like I would say these aren't necessarily um, something that's wowed me more than any other kind of translucent lip colors, but I do appreciate still Lisa Eldridge's artistry and everything that goes into these shades. So these are just the two I have. Uh, I don't really have any on my wish list, but yeah, let's move back into the True Velvet shades. I've got some pinks, oranges, reds to show you. Uh, yeah, because these these are my favorite to talk about. Next, I wanna show you Velvet Dragon, which is an orange I wear a lot when I'm in the mood for a bold orange lipstick that isn't too, too bright or overwhelming. I have two oranges from Lisa Eldridge, which is this Velvet Dragon and Velvet Morning, but I forgot to bring Velvet Morning here where I am staying with, staying at my mom's for the week. So I'll show you for comparison between these two shades. I did swatch Velvet Morning in a previous video when I was trying to decide on a red lip to wear for the holidays. So after I do Velvet Dragon, I'll show you th that shade because it's still something I want to talk about because it's a very unique shade. Um, but for now, Velvet Dragon. Okay, here is Velvet Dragon. This is a lip shade I love to wear with like a peachy orange blush, a little bit of gold on the eyelids. It should be noted that today where I'm filming, I am getting a lot of natural light through the windows, which is an overcast day. So just bear that in mind. Like I find this lip is interesting because it can look a little bit more muted in some ways but then in certain lights, like a bright sunlight, you can really see the vibrancy coming through in it. So yeah, it's an orange I find is really easy to wear on an everyday basis. Although, I mean, I find a lot of red lips and stuff pretty easy to wear, I suppose. But for anyone like maybe a bit intimidated, I do think that there is a bit of a base to it that is a bit sort of rusty and muted. So here's how Lisa Eldridge describes this shade on her website. A burnt, soft, rusty red with warm yellow undertones. Inspiration for the shade comes in the form of ancient Chinese ceramics and the pigments used for lacquering, pottery ornaments, and jewelry for thousands of years. So very interesting. I'm going to have to like look up that because it sounds really cool. Yeah, this is a go-to for me. Um, it's just the perfect balance between being muted and bright in my opinion. Now... Here's the footage I have of Velvet Morning for comparison. Can't believe I forgot it. But anyway, this is a hot and bright orange red inspired by waking up in a tropical place to see a fiery sunrise on the horizon. The ultimate pick-me-up shade was also inspired by Lisa's favorite Nancy Sinatra song, Some Velvet Morning. So Velvet Morning... Oh, this one is just so fun to wear, especially in the summer when you have a little bit of a tan going on. In the winter, like when my skin is quite a bit fairer, like it does feel like I have to wear it at the right moment and make sure I have the perfect blush shade for it. But it's the kind of bright, bright orange that I love for the summer. It just is summer for me. So yeah, I hope you could get a taste of it from the footage I had there. And these two are some of my favorite oranges, which I would definitely repurchase if I ever somehow lost them or maybe who knows in a couple years, use them all up. I really want to try Velvet Cinnabar. I've had that on my list forever. It's definitely more of a darker 
burnt orange red. So if anyone's tried that one, um, leave a comment down below. So now I'm gonna show you two shades that aren't mine. They're in the more pinky, kind of mauve family. They seem a little cool tone to me as well. These are my mom's. I have Velvet Blush and Velvet Beauty. So I'm gonna try these out. I think I've tried this one before, but never this one. I feel like this is like looking too cool tone for me. I'm not sure how I'm gonna feel about it, but kind of exciting because I'm trying it uh, in front of you. Yeah, let's start with the lighter one, Velvet Beauty, and see how that looks. Yeah, this shade is very different for me. This isn't something I would have picked up myself, but it's kind of fun because it's a bit different than something I would normally wear. I like how it kind of brings the blush forward in contrast with the, what's going on on my eyes right now. Lisa describes this as a vibrant light rose pink, perfect for ingenues everywhere. Blue undertones lend a fresh innocence. Think of Jean Serberg in A Bout de Soufflé. De Souffle. Yeah, different. I kind of like it actually. Like it's nice to have like lip shades that you don't turn to, that you don't like, um, you know, it's just a little bit different than something I would normally pick up. So it offers something kind of unique. Yeah, this one's kind of growing on me. I'll show you Velvet Blush in contrast, which seems to be a little bit deeper, maybe a bit touch redder. I realized the filming, I wasn't filming when I started applying it, but. It, it does have similarities in some way. It is like that more cool tone kind of pink. Yeah, what do you think? These aren't shades I would have chosen for myself, so uh, it's fun to add them into the mix. I don't know, I think, I think I could find the right way to wear this though, like with certain kinds of looks. It is quite pretty. Um, she writes, Velvet Blush is a deep pink berry inspired by the flushed hues of Rococo artists Watau, Fragonard, and Boucher. I don't know if I'm saying that right. A sensual boudoir shade with muted cool undertones. It doesn't get prettier or more feminine than this. From a flush lip, if applied as a stain, to a full berry pout. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty, very different. Now let's move on to some more kind of brighter and vibrant pinks. Next we have two pinks, maybe one a bit more kind of red actually, but I have here Velvet Enchantment and then Velvet Carnival. You can, one of these is mine, one of them is my mom's. You can probably guess which one is mine, Velvet Enchantment. This is just such a wearable, like pinky red that I think I saw Lisa Eldridge once describe it as like a red for people who are intimidated by reds, like nervous to wear them because it just has a sort of a muted nature rather than like a very bright red lip. And then, I mean, this is like a bold, bold fuchsia pink, not something I would normally try, but uh, yeah, I'm going to have some fun swatching it today for you. I'm going to start off with Velvet Enchantment because I think it was a bit more in the vein of the other pinks I just looked at. Yeah, there's something about it that I think translates a little bit pinky on my complexion, even though it is described as a soft rose red. I don't know why that would be, but I do personally consider it kind of more of a pink than a red. Lisa writes, this beguiling and wild muted red matter rose is a classic fairy tale in a lip color. Like a rush of blood to the lips, the instantly beautifying hue with its mix of cool and warm undertones is the most effortlessly wearable of all my reds. So yeah, I definitely find that. There's a mutedness and the undertones can pull kind of warm or kind of cool, depending probably on like the lighting, what your undertone is or what other, you know, what else is going on with your makeup. This is one I've worn like when I just wanna feel really comfortable and confident with a lip shade that has vibrancy, but isn't gonna be like me nervous about it being slightly outside the lines or something. I wore it when I was filming something for work where I had to host a show. I just thought it would be the perfect kind of shade that is, you know, lifting and enlivening without being potentially overwhelming or too much attention grabbing. Not that there's anything wrong with that. You know, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. It just kind of depends on what you need 
from your makeup that day. So let's try Velvet Carnival, which is really different for me. A uh, very vibrant fuchsia, bright, bold, pink. Let's see what happens. Well, she's vibrant all right, isn't she? So outside of my comfort zone. This is like, I haven't worn a shade like this in a long time. It's really cool. It's a really cool shade for sure. I think this is the kind of shade that, um, you know, can make your teeth look really yellow. It's like if you have really white teeth, uh, this is going to work better for you. Um, here's the comparison. Um, swatches. Velvet Enchantment. Now Lisa writes, a pop art pink that wears its party girl heart on its sleeve. A Warhol electric pink. A Warhol electric pink. Say that five times fast. A Warhol electric pink screen print. Oh my God. A Warhol electric pink screen print hue with blue undertones that's quintessentially contemporary and modern. This is an acid fuchsia with attitude. It sure is. Um, this, I, I see the party girl element. It kind of reminds me of like, I don't know, it, almost like in Saltburn, what they would be wearing at one of those parties or like Skins era. Like this lip shade just, I don't know, kind of reminds me of that. It would look really good, I think, on someone with like dark hair or deeper skin. I don't think it's very harmonious with my complexion and hair, but you know, we're not always going for harmony with lip shades, are we? It's fun. It's flirty. And I'm going to show you all the reds I have, which are my favorites. I have a lot of reds swatched out for you at once because some of them are from her True Velvet formula and some are the Velveteen liquid lips. So most of these are mine. So here we have Velvet Duchess, which is a little bit more of like a pinky red. This is Velvet Jazz, um, which is mine, a favorite of mine, a darker red. And this is Velvet Jazz in liquid form. A little bit darker, a little bit more almost like brown in it. And then we have Velvet Ribbon, classic, classic bright red. And then Velvet Ribbon in the liquid lip form. So I'll be swatching all of these for you on the lips, but just, yeah, for a quick comparison. Okay, Velvet Duchess. Let's see this one. This one is my mother's. I, I've been on the fence about getting this one for a while, but I told her to buy it first so I could try it. Okay, Velvet Duchess. This one's a really interesting one because it seems like almost like a really, really deep magenta in some lights and then also at times like a really dark red. So I think she used this, or it's used on the in the crown show um, for the queen, I believe. But yeah, she describes this one as a clear, clean, deep red garnet, so sumptuous it's almost scandalous. Velvet Duchess is a fresh twist on the 1940s red favored by royalty. Deeper than velvet ribbon, purer than velvet jazz, the blue undertones of this fearless suits everyone. Instant classic is sure to get people talking. Yeah, it's cool. It's definitely, you can see those cool undertones, I think. I think that's why there's like this slight pinkness that translates on my complexion. It's almost like a deep magenta. So yeah, this is not one I own, but it's definitely really cool. I was always curious how it compared to Velvet Jazz, which is her other darker red. So yeah, I think Velvet Jazz is showing more of those brown tones coming through. So I'll show you Velvet Jazz next, both the Velvet formula and then the Velveteen liquid lip formula. This is mine, one of my first purchases, and it is a favorite. My lips are just starting to feel the pain. <laughs> God, there's something about this one that I just uh, love. It's fantastic. You may be able to tell, like, despite the fact that I've swatched so many lipsticks at this point, th these matte shades are holding up and that they're not looking too dry because there is this slight emollient finish that it keeps it still hydrating, even though it's a matte formula. So Velvet Jazz 
is described as a muted, earthy, brick red, inspired by the red lipsticks from the 1930s in Lisa Eldridge's makeup collection. Yeah, this one's one of my favorites. Like, something about it feels so sophisticated whenever I wear it. It's a red, but with like, I don't know, like a maturity to it, I suppose you could say. I kind of reserve this for when I'm just in that mood for feeling very like, classic lady put together. Yeah, these are kind of drawing down a little more of the liquid lips and you can just see that touch of like brick red to it rather than having more of like a blue base to it. I think that's why I like it so much. I believe I have neutral undertones. So I think like having that nothing too blue base can like really work in a more harmonious way for me. And yeah, anyway, I will show you this now in the liquid formula. This is my mom's, I haven't tried it yet. But I'm pretty sure the liquid lip is like translates quite a bit darker and bear with me as I try and apply it because liquid lips require concentration. I didn't mind the staining because it is technically the same tone that's going on the lips. So I don't think it's going to create an issue. Yeah, look how much darker the liquid already looks. In the liquid formula, it leans into the depth. It's, it becomes quite a bit more vampy. It's really striking though, you know? You can see how the undertones remain the same, but I guess something about the formula brings out some of the deeper pigments more. I don't really know, but it's really cool. It's not perfect. I didn't apply my lines perfectly because it's just about to come right off, but I think you have a pretty good impression of how the shade looks. Here it is. You can see as it's dried down, like, yeah, this one's kind of more vampire-y to me. I think this is almost like what I thought Velvet Duchess would look like on me, being such like a rich garnet kind of hue. So yeah, those are those reds. And let's finish it off with the red to end all reds, which is Velvet Ribbon. Help. <laughs> Why did I do this? <gasps> my lips hurt. <laughs> oh my God. The liquid lips are especially hard to... Get rid of they stain. It's a good thing. <laughs> I'm tired. I've tried with concealer to clean this up a little bit. Velvet ribbon. This is a bright, bold red. The kind of red that is just so classic. Everybody needs to have a red like this because you just need that go-to bright red. Anyway, we'll put it on uh, and then we'll talk. Something I find so interesting about this red is as you start building it up on your lips, like when it's a bit more translucent, um, you can really see the blue base in it, but as you build it up, then like the orangey red starts to come through. It's really cool. Lisa describes this one as a vibrant, classic, neutral blue red. This is the one universally flattering pillar box red that everyone needs, the sumptuous velvet bow shade of Lisa's dreams. So this is also in the vein of Velvet Jazz in that this is a lip I pull out for a very classic look. This is one when I want the red to be a bit more of the statement drawing in. Like in the summer, it just like has that vibrancy and brightness to it. Just when you want the classic red lip, this is perfect for it. This is one of the first ones I bought. It was Velvet Jazz, Velvet Decade, and Velvet Ribbon. And yes, I'm impressed with the formula, still just holding up as I, uh, my lips are dying. Now I'll show you the liquid lip version of this, and then we're done. <laughs> this liquid lip, I think it's... A lot more similar to the the bullet version than Velvet Jazz is. They're pretty much identical. Maybe this one is a touch darker. Mm, I don't know. Here they are. This one just like dries down a little bit more, it's, of course, because it's a liquid lip to be a bit more of that like really matte finish. So it depends on what you're looking for in terms of shade. They're very, very similar, just classic, classic red, right? 
I have worn this like all day and it does last pretty well. Um, personally, I'm more of a fan of a bullet formula just for ease of use because liquid lips, you make one wrong move and then ugh, you got to get the makeup remover out and stuff. But if I had an event and I didn't want to worry about the lipstick smudging a bit, I would definitely then go for the liquid lip. So it depends what you're going for. It depends on what finish you like. And yeah, that's it. The journey is complete. Uh, I almost don't regret forgetting Velvet Warning at home because one more, one more swatch in my lips may have given up on me. But yeah, let me know if you have any comments down below, any questions about any of the formulas, any of the shades. Uh, always bear in mind that lips look different depending on your undertone, your coloring, the lighting, the other makeup, your outfit. I think you can make any color work for you. It's just about finding the right way, how, how you wanna wear it. Basically the same thing I'm exploring and trying all the color seasons. I'm almost done. It's the same thing to me, just like you can find ways to make any shade work for you. And yeah, I hope this helped. If you're trying to make any decisions about your Lisa Eldridge lipstick choice, let me know your favorite Lisa Eldridge shades, whether it's one you own or maybe one of the ones I swatched today, which one was your favorite? Definitely leave a comment. And yeah, that's it for today. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It means a lot. And stay witchy, stay bitchy. Have a good week. Bye, witches.